you ever think it's a little crazy? Obviously, you guys have huge expectations coming off the Elite Eight run, but a good chunk of your team hasn't even played a college basketball game yet. Do you, do you find that crazy at all? Oh, it's nuts. We have uh, three players that have been in a duck uniform for more than two seasons, or two seasons or more. So this is still a young team, two seniors, two juniors. Um, we're still, you know, uh, I improving day to day. I mean, it's still a work in progress. And, uh, you know, the expectations, you know, are nice and everything. But the reality is, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of work to do. We've got to, you know, continue to get better. Is it different at all? Do you have to manage those expectations? Or is that something you talk about with your, your team that you haven't really had to before this season? We haven't talked about it much. You know, in today's day, you know, where the social media is so prevalent everywhere, it's hard to hide the fact that, you know, people have you ranked here and there and everywhere. But the reality is we haven't played a single game. It's based on what, what happened last year and who we have back. But that doesn't mean anything. And so we haven't really dwelled on it as a staff with the team. Uh, what they're talking about, I don't know. We have really humble, humble kids on our team. Uh, they're hard workers. They're all about team. So, you know, I don't anticipate that that's going to be a factor one way or another. Is one of the long-term goals, though, I mean, the magical run last year was basically on the East Coast to have a season where maybe you can have a better seed and play closer to home? Oh, no doubt. And I think that's a good goal to have is to be a, a host, you know, so to be one of the top 16 seeds in the, in the tournament. Uh, I think that's uh, realistic. And it's something that we, you know, we want to do because it, it is uh, a clear advantage, you know, to, to, to play the tournament at home. Um, but beyond that, you know, we'll see. We, we honestly, it sounds cliche, but we, we talk every day about getting better and, and getting better today uh, than we were yesterday and, and looking for better things for tomorrow. So, uh, you know, I know, that's probably a boring answer, but that's kind of reality and that's how we're, we're approaching things. How much does having a competitor like Sabrina kind of keep everyone on their toes and, and focused on getting better? Oh, yeah, having Sabrina here is, uh, is like another coach, um, uh, actually with even more power because, you know, the kids on the team respond to her. And, and they love her, you know, and she, she gets a lot of attention nationally. It's deserved. But I don't think any of our players uh, are jealous or – you know, want to deny her those those uh, accolades because she is such a great teammate and puts teammates first and works harder than anybody on on a daily basis. So, uh, you know, she's uh, she's a great leader to have, and and certainly as a coach, it's it's really nice knowing that she's on the court each and every day. What's the next um, step in her development this year? Well, I think she's got to continue to be a two-way player. You know, she can't just do things at the offensive end. She's got to be be able to to, to guard better. Uh, you know, to lead our team defense. Um, she has a tendency to kind of float, you know, and she's so great at anticipating that sometimes it, it puts uh, other players at a disadvantage. So she's getting better at that. I think she's still got to continue to be uh, proficient in the pick and roll. Um, and, and she's learning from one of the best, I think, in the country, in my take is Orla. Uh, and then just, uh, you know, with Sabrina, she's got to just kind of, move on you know to the next play she's really hard on herself because you know she is so driven she is so competitive but sometimes you just you know if, if you make a play that uh, that isn't great or you know uh, you miss a shot you just got to move on and uh, and I think she's improving in all those areas do you look at her as a player who's gonna become more of a scorer every year or do you look at her as a player whose growth might be distributing the ball as kind of floor general type? I think that's what makes her so successful. She could do anything. I mean, literally, if she if she really wanted to focus on getting 25 or 30 on a night, she could do it. You know, if, if, uh, if she wanted to just be a double-digit assist player, she could do that, and we've seen that she can get you 12 or 15 rebounds. So I think that's the beauty of her game. I don't think there's any one area. Um, I, I wouldn't call her a female LeBron, but I mean, she, <laughs> but she's like that. She, yeah. she can impact the game in so many ways, like he does, and, uh, and play it at a, at a, you know, at a really high level. She's got to continue to work on consistency as well, you know. And uh, so I, I don't know where, where it'll lead her, but she's capable of really doing a little bit of everything. You've gone through a big rebuild like this before, obviously, at Gonzaga. Was there a point there where you felt like maybe it was year three or four where you felt like you went from kind of hunter to hunted? Yeah, it was a gradual process. Uh, we went from no conference wins to two conference wins to nine conference wins to 10 to 
14 and 0 to an undefeated season. And I think that was our first of 10 straight championships. And so I think from that point on, we were obviously the the, the standard. We were the hunted team. Uh, so you know we've been in this, this kind of position before. I have as a as a coach, and uh, I think it. it can motivate your team in a different way and it challenges it differently knowing that hey we're not going to sneak up on anybody anymore you know we're that team that other teams are looking to beat you've been through that before but how do you relate that to players who you've already said are so young they don't really have any clue about what they might be what might be coming for them um, how do you relate the kind of challenges ahead you know we we talk every day about just again getting better so we try to compartmentalize things uh, I don't know how we'll handle it because we haven't had to handle it yet we'll, we'll see I think Friday night uh, and during this whole NIT, I think it's just going to be a, a great experience for us and a good challenge for us. Um, and, you know, and if it looks like we're not handling it the way we should and need to, then we'll adjust how we're coaching them. Yeah. Kelly, Kelly, you raved about Sachi. What's the skin of your boy and your sister now that she's signed? Yeah, wow. Well, I wish we could link, and I, we're going to try and link a highlight tape uh, of her. Uh, she's phenomenal. You know, she's built a little bit more like Ruthie, but still plays – uh, a lot like uh, like Satu, you know, with real guard skills. She's the kind that can get a rebound and and go coast to coast and change directions a couple of times and finish at the rim. She can hit the three. She's just a, a real versatile player. She's 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 another big time talent. And uh, and if you know her, you'll know she's uh, got a real exuberance for life, which I love and appreciate. I think she's going to be a great fit for the the culture we've built. You got like a San Antonio Spurs thing going on here with your international players. You feel yeah. like that's an area that, not to give away your your secrets here, but international is, is where they're just maybe a little ahead of the U.S. players. Well, it's positionless basketball over there. You know, they don't uh, when they break down, they go okay, posts over here, guards over here. It's legitimately they they do everything. They're very skilled. They work on skills. I mean, look at the NBA. Look at how many international players play in the NBA, and you're looking at seven footers who are shooting threes and. You know, Porzingis, you know, he's a stretch five for crying out loud. And that's just kind of what they're used to doing. And so, yeah, they come in very well prepared. Uh, and, and the aura is, is that way. But, yeah, that gives us now two Germans, I think two Aussies, uh, two Spaniards. And uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty neat to see. And I, again, say if you're not uh, recruiting internationally, I think you're doing a, a disservice to your program because there are so many fine players all over the world. College is obviously an area where it's people from different backgrounds come together. How cool is it? As teammates now, they have teammates all from all over the world, and and uh, the bond that that you know that they're going to have as uh, as a as a team as teammates is is so strong. So uh, I, I, yeah, it, it's awesome to learn about other cultures, and uh, you know every once in a while we have to kind of rephrase what what we say. Uh, like we always say, they all speak the language of basketball, which is you know most important here, but. Uh, yeah, it's 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 been terrific. I, I you know, I've really enjoyed you know uh, working with these student athletes from all over. Corey, you guys will come in, and if so, can you summarize? Was it a good good crop? Y you mean the? Uh, yeah, we have both NLIs. We're only signing two, and um, uh, for this fall, and and one is Taylor Chavez, uh, uh, Arizona 6A State Player of the Year last year. Uh, extremely competitive, um, multi-skilled. She's a guard, about five nine, five ten. Uh, can play with the ball or without, uh, good shooter, clutch player. Uh, I think when I was sold on her, it was a game I saw her play against Sabrina. They both went for over 30. It was toe-to-toe. -to -toe. She, she rose to the challenge of, of playing against Sabrina. Uh, I think you're going to really like her. She's a 4.5 student as well. Never had an A- minus in her life, which neither did I, but <laughs> not for the same, same reason. Uh, just uh, yeah, an outstanding young woman who who is who loves to compete. And that's what I, I love most about her. And then Niara Sabali is, I, I think, an, another special talent. Um, MVP of the U18 European Championships last year. Uh, she um, uh, Germany won the gold medal, and uh, she's just again a six-three player that can do a little of everything: shoot it, drive it, great rebounder, strong, runs the floor, just a versatile athlete who's also a real, really, really good kid. So you got a luxury of bringing back your starters. Do you see that coming back intact or are you letting the first couple games play out where you could change things up? Oh, yeah. And I, the, the team knows. We, we've, we're at least too deep at every position. And so it's made practices great. 
and no, there's no position that's uh, that's firmed up. You know, quite frankly, I mean, we're it, it's going to be fluid, and uh, and we want our our team to know that it, you know, that those positions are open, minutes are open for for anybody. It's about us. We we just want to be the best that we can be, regardless of who starts, finishes, plays the most minutes. That doesn't matter.